inspired by two artists with similar styles, Ramir Brito and Laurel Brush. These two artists have really similar styles in the fact that they love to add patterns inside of the things that they create. This could be an animal person, but inside of them, they usually add lots of lines and design patterns to it. I'm gonna do a cat for you today. So a cat and a dog are very quite similar when you're drawing them. You just have to change a few things like the ears and the eyes. So for my cat, I'm gonna start off in the same way where I did kind of a oval or circle shape for its head. And then I'm gonna give it some pointed ears instead of the ears that are laying down. Then I'm gonna give it some really big eyes. And I'm gonna exaggerate the eyes even a little bit, meaning I'm making them a little out of proportion and bigger than they should be. And then an upside down triangle nose. And then we're going to give it some lines coming down. And you know what? I think I'm actually gonna close up these lines, making them more like ovals instead. And then I'm gonna add a little extra design detail here, and we're gonna add another line coming down the face, because I'm really gonna to wanna to cut this in half. So that way I can add more color there later. All right, now we're gonna bring down our body. My cat is going to be sitting upright. So I'm really gonna make kind of like a big W. These are for his paws in the front. And then we're gonna add a line underneath and give him his tail. So this is just a really simple design for a cat or a dog that's sitting down. If you want, you can also add a little back paw that's maybe sitting back there. And you could taper these down a little bit more if you'd like. I can add in some lines for paws. That's up to you. But now I'm, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna also give mine a collar and I'm gonna put a little triangle on his collar. And then I'm gonna start to divide up my space even more, just big sections. You can use straight lines, you can use curving lines, whatever you want. This is gonna allow me to add some different colors to each space and then ultimately my different patterns. So I'm gonna speed up my video as I start to color in each of my spaces. You'll notice as I am coloring, that I kind of skip around in different spaces with the same color, because I really don't want the same color to be touching um, each other. I wanna have it kind of throughout my picture randomly, but I still have that sense of unity because I am using a limited color palette, which means I have limited the colors that I have chosen. So for me, I think I'm choosing, I have about five colors that I've chosen. Um, sometimes I tell students that no more than four is a good, is a good rule to, cut, to keep in mind, but ultimately it's up to you as the artist on how much color you want. But I do always say that a smart artist makes smart choices and limiting their color palette. All right, let's speed this up a little bit so you can see this finished product. Okay, I finished coloring my cat and now I'm going to add in my pattern. I'm going to finish coloring in the eyes. So uh, as you can see, I also added in a pattern floor. You could even do a pattern ceiling. There's really no, so, no such thing as too much pattern when it comes to these pictures. Um, again, you just wanna think about each space having its own pattern. Perhaps you're going to do some swirls of lines or maybe some waves. Maybe you could add in some of your other colors if you'd like as well, or you could do checker patterns within your animal. That's up to you. Maybe some squares on his tail, circles, triangles. This is your cat. You are free to make it however it is that you would like it to be. You don't have to do patterns in every space though. Some of your spaces could just be left 
with the color that you've chosen, that's fine also. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to see what it is you create.